Bleak House was released in 1996 and was the last box set for the Ravenloft campaign setting. Written by William Connors and Steve Miller, with interior art by Catherine Gul'dan, and covers by Dana Kunson and Stephen Fabian. It comes with three source books and a full-size poster map. It takes place in the domains of Dominia and Darkhan. It chronicles the death of Rudolf Van Richten. When the Vistani elder Madame Ranovich kidnapped Van Richten's son and sold him to the vampire Baron Metis, she set off a chain of events for the forces of good she could never predict. After Van Richten got his revenge and finally made peace with the Ranovich clan, it seemed there would be finally a peace. But evil never dies. Madame Ranovich, upon death, became a vengeful spirit, and she drew in other spirits who were allies of Van Richten to haunt his ancestral home in Darkon, to which he has not been to in many, many years. From there she plotted her revenge. She had the vampire Baron Metis resurrected and he had imprisoned a Vistanicist, Sionicist, and had him mentally drive Van Richten mad. Van Richten has physically and mentally broken down and he was remitted to the care of Dr. Domini, who is really the Claude Henfroth, a vampire who draws brain fluid from his victims and was in Feast of Goblins. The Claude is now the lord of his own domain, Dominia, an island in the Sea of Sorrows. He has a renowned asylum on the island, which Van Richten has been taken to, but is this really a feeding ground for the Claude? The Claude has teamed up with Baron Metis and Madame Radovich to drive Van Richten totally mad, and then have him taken to Madame Radovich where they will destroy him. The Sea of Madness Sourcebook is the first adventure and has the heroes arrive at the domain of Dominia. They can either just be on a ship and shipwreck there or they can be purposely looking for Van Richten. They will be guests of the Claude but soon discover that they are in fact prisoners. Each night the heroes are put to sleep and experiment upon slowly driving them crazy. All the patients and orderlies wear this spooky mask so that players will never know who is who causing paranoia among them. Eventually, the heroes will discover Van Richten is also a prisoner there, and they must team up to find a way to escape the island. This part of the adventure plays like the old TV show The Prisoner, or the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And it's really damn good. I mean damn good. The fear, tension, and paranoia, they're just off the scale of this part. The nightly torture sessions the heroes will endure will truly disturb them. There's an entire chapter on the various tortures the heroes will endure that will play on their phobias and fears. And the DM is encouraged to go nuts. The domain of Dominia is well detailed, as is the asylum, and it is truly a horrific place, one your players will not forget. After escaping the domain of Dominia with Van Richten, the hero should learn that a man named the Baron was the one who had Van Richten committed to the asylum. This leads them to the city of Martira Bay, where they discover the Baron resides at the Black Tower. Baron Metis is posing as a doctor at a free clinic. The heroes will have to infiltrate the Black Tower, which is a dungeon crawl, and will have a final confrontation with the Baron and rescue the Sionist Vistani. The Vistani will tell Van Richen that he needs to go to his ancestral home and face his final foe. This part of the adventure is done good as well. The heroes are escaped prisoners from an asylum and are being hunted by the authorities. The Black Tower has some cool dungeon encounters and since they are still recovering from the tortures, it will not be an easy dungeon crawl. And Baron Metis is a worthy foe. While not as good as the asylum part, it still holds up very well. Book 2 Homecoming has the heroes arrive at Van Richten's ancestral home. Not only is the house haunted by Madame Radovich, it is haunted by several ghosts a former friends and family who died as a result of Van Richten's monster hunts. The ghosts are all being controlled by Madame Radovich. The servants of the house are ghosts and are reliving, are reliving an endless loop of the day they died. They all died the same day and are not quite sure what has happened to them. And they will be there for four days so it's going to keep repeating day after day. 
The DM is to do a Taroka deck reading, which will determine where the nine spirits will haunt the place at night. And these spirits will try to harm Van Richten, though they have no hatred for him. These are nine spirits of people who died during Van Richten's monster hunts. And they were friends of his. And that makes an interesting twist for the spirits. They don't want to hurt them, but they are forced to by Madame Radovich. This is a great haunted house adventure, and the Taroka deck changes the hauntings each playthrough. The house does have a spooky atmosphere, with the servant ghosts not realizing they are dead and reliving the same day over and over again. Merged with the nine spirits who haunt the house at night at different places at different times makes for a frightening experience. In the end, though, there will be a final showdown between the heroes and Madame Radovich, which will result in Van Richen sacrificing himself to save the day. Book 3, Heroes, Monsters, and Settings is pretty self-explanatory. It details all of the villain NPCs, Van Richten himself, the Domain of Dominia, and the city of Maridea Bay. Included in that detail of the city is Alan Ray, who is the Sherlock Holmes in Ravenloft and famous detective, who is now the chief constable of the city. He has worked with Van Richten before and appeared in some of the guides. The leader of the Cargat in the city is a vampire named Lady Tavilia, who will be an important NPC in future Ravenloft products. Now, is Van Richten really dead? Well, depending on the Taroka drawing, there were several different fates that could have happened, but the one I think is canon, and the one that I like the best, is the one where Van Richten will be reborn as a baby. And when he is 25 years old, he will venture out in the world and be a light in the time of unparalleled darkness. The time of unparalleled darkness is supposed to be the third major epic event that happens to the Ravenloft campaign setting. Although, unfortunately, and very sadly, Ravenloft was cut short in third edition, so the fruits of this seed that is starting to be planted now at this time when this product came out and will be planted during several other products never truly came to fruition but a DM can work around that and have the basic ideas of it which will be discussed in further reviews come true. However all the endings are satisfying and they do offer a good conclusion to this saga. There is a reason that Bleak House is often considered the best Ravenloft product ever put out. It is epic and tragic, brutal yet hopeful, horrifying yet thrilling at the same time. The Asylum Party adventure is worth the purchase alone, but every act in this three-act adventure is great. I cannot praise it enough, and it is a must-own for any Ravenloft fan. But, I do have a tip. If you do play this as part of a campaign, there are things you can do to make this better. First, is have your players throughout the campaign read the Van Richten guides. Doing so will let them get to know Van Richten and his exploits, and actually see the tragic fate of some of the ghosts in these adventures. Second, have Van Richten show up from time to time in the campaign and let the heroes work with him. You know, Chilling Tales is a good example of a product that lets you do that, but you can plug Van Richten in on any mini adventure or long adventure his stats or any of the core sets. This way they get to know him. And this will raise the stakes for Bleak House and the tragic ending will carry more weight. Again, however, I emphasize that this is a must buy. This is often considered the best product in the Ravenloft line and I am hard pressed to agree with that. Old soldiers never die. For more than three decades, Dr. Rudolph Van Richten stood against the forces of darkness and hunted their servants in the far corners of the land of the mist. Now he had thought his long battle over, had thought he could spend his declining years in quiet enjoyment with old friends. But for some, a tragic end is inevitable. Dark forces have been gathering in the mist. Their objective is to see Ravenloft's foremost expert on the supernatural destroyed shattered in spirit as well as in body. 
From the crumbling ephodus of Van Richten's childhood home, an enemy long thought vanquished spins a web of powerful evils and lost souls, drawing Van Richten to his doom. And then a group of heroes gets trapped in the web as well. Witness the final stand of Rudolf Van Richten. Inside this box is a grand scaled Ravenloft adventure that pushes heroes to the brink of madness and draws them into the terrifying scheme to annihilate Rudolf Van Richten. This set contains Sea of Madness, a 96 page book detailing the island of Dominia and relating the events that start the cycle of doom. Homecoming, a 64 page book describing the Van Richten family estate and the large haunted mansion known as Bleak House. Suitable for use with the Bleak House campaign or the Mask of Red Death setting, this adventure is designed so it can be played several times and no two experiences will be the same. Heroes, Monsters, and Settings A 32-page book containing game statistics for some of Ravenloft's best-known yet never detailed villains, a new type of vampire, information on Martira Bay and Darkon, and maps intended for use with the Bleak House campaign. A color map revealing the layout and secrets of Bleak House itself.